Hey, it's Will. I've got the fifth video in our five-part sequence for a tutorial on making a simple plug-in project in RackAFX. We've created a prototype GUI here. We've got a volume knob, an on-off switch, two LED meters, and a couple of option menus. And right now, we're going to put together the final GUI. So this is going to be our custom GUI. Our prototyping is done. Our testing and design is done. So we're in the final stages of getting this product out the door. Now I've decided to make the sort of color of the GUI an orange flavor and I need to bring in some um, some graphics to do that with. So the first thing I want to show you is if you click open project folder this will take you to your Rack AFX projects. Here is Hello Volume and inside of that is a resources folder. In here with every new Rack AFX, Rack AFX 7 project I give you a bunch of stock graphics that you can use or not use. These are not part of your Visual Studio project. They're just files that are sitting there. Um, when you import these files into ASPIC, it brings it into the XML file, so there's never any worry of bringing resources into compiler projects or any of that stuff. In the meters, you're going to have two. You're going to have this, this off gray and this on green. These, these two are going to be in every project. I copied the off, pulled it into paint, and I put a thin orange line around it. And then I copied the on meter, pu pulled it into paint, and then dumped it with orange paint. So I now have two new off and on graphics. The, the orange outline is important because we have a very dark background here. I also have a skin made up for this plugin. I'm using a piece of software called Skin Man. It's designed just for making these plugin skins. This one is a three layer uh, plug, uh, a three layer skin. It's got these wood panels on the side. It's 450 by 100. I call this Moger one because it looks like a Moog kind of a old synth wood panel thing. That's all ready to go. I also have several other graphics I've made, a logo and I have a custom knob control that is a red, that has an orange kind of ring around it that's a Moog thing. So I'm going to use all that. If we load the plugin, we can go into the GUI designer. However, you should know that since this is an ASPIC plugin core project, there is already a GUI designer built into your plugin, built into your project. If you click on the show hide custom GUI, you're going to get this big, ugly, blank, gray thing. If you hold the shift key down and right click, you can choose open UI description editor. And that will then take you into the uh, ASPIC GUI designer. Now, we're not going to use it um, for this particular one. You can feel free to use that GUI designer, my GUI designer, go back and forth. Uh, it's all good. We'll go into the GUI designer right now and go to the ping tab. We need to import in all those graphics we're going to use. So I'm going to do that right now. Here are my meters. So I've got the off orange meter here. Hit new and go to on orange. So there's the VU meter. I now need to get that background. And so that's in here. It's called Moger 1. There's the uh, wood, wood paneled background that I did. I also have FAT2. This is my knob control right here. So there's my custom uh, knob control. And I also have a volume logo right here that I made. So this is just kind of a logo for the plugin. I have an aspect logo, but I'm not sure if I'm even going to have room for it. So it, I'm going to leave it out for now. If we need it, we can come back. You can use the delete button here to remove this stuff from XML. So uh, if, you, if you add more than you need, you can always pare it down to get it exactly right. Let's go to objects and drag a blank view container into the GUI designer. Right click, change the size to 450 by 100 because that's what our skin is. And in background image, we're going to choose Moger 1. There's the skin. Hit save. It's clicking in, uh, has a grid of five right now, and that's set up right here. If you hold the escape key down, you can move it around without snapping to the grid. And you get a little window that tells you where the upper left coordinates and the overall size of the GUI are located. And that's what I'm doing right now. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting in a little one pixel. Let's see if I can. There we go. Putting in a one by one um, thin one pixel strip of gray that goes around this. So there's a one by one margin. The only reason I'm doing that is I found that for exports that are going into Mac OS, so that's AX, AU, and VST Mac, for some reason, when you embed the GUI into the Coco window, having that one extra pixel makes it look nicer. That's all. If you don't have the pixel there, it doesn't look horrible, and it's not clipped or anything like that. But I just prefer the way that it looks with that. 
we need our volume knob, so I'm going to grab a text label from here, drag that up, right click, change the color. Ah, we want orange and there's no orange in here. So we'll click add a new color, we get a color blender, and I'm going to create an orange color that's actually on the brighter, on the yellow side of orange, because it's going to be, it's going to need to stand out against that black background. So I'm going to do something like this, it looks about as orange as I can get without being yellow. Hit OK and I'm going to call it orange. That custom color is now available for the rest of my GUI design session. I'll right click here, change the name to volume, and change the font size to normal font smaller. Change this a little bit and then drag that, whoops, hello. Drag this up into the GUI right here. Next thing I want is my knob. Here's the knob I'm just dragging off and here is the way that I'm going to set it to FAT2. So there's my new graphic. For the knob, it automatically resizes itself, and I'm going to connect that to the volume control. So there is my volume knob set and connected. And I want a momentary switch, an on-off switch for the mute switch. I'll take a text label for that, change it to mute, change the font to normal font smaller, and change the color to orange, my new custom color. Say save, and I'll take this and I'll drag this and put this up inside of my GUI. So there's the mute uh, label. I'll take a on off button here. Now there's already a stock toggle button that I like, so I'm going to keep that. I don't need to import any graphics in for that. As soon as you drag it into the GUI designer, it will then write it into the ping file for you. So that happens automatically with some of the built in graphics here. Right click and choose enable mute, which is here. Now we've got the two option menus left. To do that, I'm going to make a, a shortcut. I'm going to drag a view container and I'm going to set the back color to dark gray just for right now. Come over here and take a text label and change the color to orange and change the font to normal font smaller. I'm not going to worry about the label because this is going to be variable. You'll see what I mean in a minute. I'll put that into my container so this is now part of the container. Take a uh, drop list here, see option menu right click and the text color is going to be orange the frame color is going to be orange and i'm going to resize it a little bit so i'm going to widen it out and i'm going to make it a little teeny bit teeny bit uh, less tall and i'm going to hold the escape key down right now and kind of really um, sort of really tweak these and get these right in place I'm trying to get it close uh, close enough where I can make this container a little bit smaller. So now I'm going to take the container and make it as small as I really can while still holding it, at, ho holding the, t the components. So there's the container. Right click and change the background to transparent now that I'm done working. If you don't do transparent, it can be frustrating because everything's transparent. Uh, I want to right click on this and say save as, and I'm going to call this an option group. When you do that, it will now show up in the templates. So anytime I need one of those, I can just drag it right off of this template and pull it right into the GUI designer. So here are two. I need that many, so I'm just going to keep these over uh, in the, my workspace. I'll drag this right up into the GUI here. And this is going to be my channels. I'm going to change the label to channels. And we'll connect the option menu here to the channels variable inside of the plugin. I'll drag this one up. This is now going to be my preset. And I will connect its option menu to the preset selection ID right here. Those guys are set up. Time for VU meters. We'll come over to the LED meter here. When you drag this, you get the stock, very old timey looking meter. We will right click on that and we will change the on to on orange and the off to off orange. That gives us that. Connect that to the left out meter and then drag that right here. So here is our left output meter. And I'll do it uh, one more time. And I'll connect this one to the right output meter. So there is that. So I could put little labels up here that say left and right or whatever. I'm just going to leave these alone. Um, maybe I'll put a label that just says uh, output. And of course, it's going to be orange. 
and normal font smaller like this. And I'll drag that and put that right here. So let me tweak these down a couple of clicks. Whoops. Like this. So there's my left and my right output view meter. It looks like I've, I need to re-put this. There we go. One, one. Leave that alone. Uh, the view meters are connected up. That one's connected to right. So we're good to go here. We have uh, nothing really left other than maybe a logo. And I do have a logo here. It's called the volume logo. Whoops. And the volume logo is just artwork, sorry. I need to go to the view container, come over here and then right click on that. The volume logo is 150 by 37 pixels. And the image is right here, volume logo. It's called the volumizer. And it looks like I've made it a little bit on the big side here. Now, one thing I'll tell you is you can resize this and it will resize the graphic inside a problem with that is that it doesn't work in Mac OS. So if you moved this, if you exported this to AU or VST Mac or AAX Mac, then this graphic would not look the same. That's just part of VST GUI 4. It's actually not VST GUI 4, that's part of Mac OS. So I'm, I'm not going to try to you know, pin that on anybody other than, than Mac OS. We will... Um, Massage that a little bit. So now we're looking pretty good. We've got some blank area up here. I, I'm going to leave that and let you mess around with that on your own. So the GUI is now done. It's designed and it's complete. We do need to rebuild it. So I'll open the compiler. I'm going to build from within uh, Visual Studio because I don't want to do a complete rebuild. Now as long as we're in here, take a look at this file, plugin GUI.UIDESC. It's in the resources uh, filter right here. This is the XML file. This is the file that we just made. If we scroll up to the top, you can see orange. There's the custom color that I just made for it. Here are the orange uh, on and off ping file data. So this is raw ping file data that's been embedded. So there's all that ping file data that got embedded into the XML file. And then down at the very bottom, we have the actual drawings that we made. So these are the templates and the other stuff that we did. You can see FAT2, that's the knob right there. So that's how your, your, uh, your plugin is encoded as far as the GUI goes. We've built, I'm going to hit load. And now we can access the custom GUI through show hide custom GUI right here. There it is. You can see that the taper moves over to the new GUI taper. There's our mute. And of course we have our presets. All that's still working and you can see that it works inside the custom GUI as well. Of course here are our V meters uh, bobbing right along. Now just to reiterate that you still have the other GUI designer, I'll right click, hold open UI description editor down and there, bingo. There is the work that we just did in the Rack AFX GUI designer. Okay, so we've been through five tutorials. We've gone all the way from configuring Rack AFX for the very first time, all the way to this point here, designing a very beautiful and orangey looking uh, GUI for our plugin. At this point, we've, we're done. We have debugged it. We've done all the work we need to do. Rack AFX has done its job now. At this point, Rack AFX's job is done and finished. We can use the Export Aspect button right here to bring this out into an, as into an Aspect product and then compile that for one of the, any APIs that we want to. That's all inside of other videos in Aspect, and I will probably do one video uh, as the sixth video to show you how to do that to make a sort of a complete plugin from beginning to end. I just want to reiterate, though, that Rack AFX is only designed to do this part, first part of it. Making a plugin framework in AU and AX and VST, that happens inside of Aspic. Also, if you use Aspic or you've, you've seen it before, it has its own graphic front end. So you can create Aspic products with, a, with an application. You can assign parameters into it. I've done everything I can to streamline it, streamline it as much as possible. But my favorite way to work, honestly, is still good old-fashioned Rack AFX. So I will see you in the next video. We'll talk about Aspic export.